which is project charter right right now at the yellow belt level you need to understand the purpose of it and exactly how to write a project charter and all that we will be doing it in the next level like like you know we'll spend more time and maybe we can do a small exercise and all of you can write a project charter now let's understand what is a project charter first of all project charter is a one page document tomorrow if you also need our support to do a project in your company you should be able to communicate your project idea to us yes or no if you can't communicate a project idea and it is nobody can help you similarly in your company if you want to do a project first of all you must communicate your project idea to the project sponsor right project sponsor means the person within your company who has the authority to give approval for implementing some new ideas because implementation requires time requires effort requires some special permissions budget also so the person who has such an authority has to understand your project idea and then he has to put his signature the moment he puts his signature your project is you know uh, coming to life so the document which you will be sharing with the project sponsor is known as project chart all of you understand and it should be a uh, short and crisp and to the point and at the same time it should communicate the required messages why am i why am i insisting for this because the sponsor obviously be you know a busy person and maybe part of the top management and so our head of so in some companies even head of the department will have certain powers to implement so in any case they may not be able to spend you know hours together to understand your project they can only spend few minutes so within those few minutes can you create an impression within those few minutes can you create an impression so you have to create a project charter in just one page if at all required maybe you can go for one another page one or two pages and it should have certain key information the very first information any sponsor will be interested in i'll tell you business case the very very first information suppose you want to uh, do a project in our company the first thing i will be interested is you know if i spend time with you if i provide resources all my support to you how is how my organization is going to benefit from it sir yes no what kind of problem you are solving you know that is also you no know, uh, important but it is it comes next the first point i want to understand is will it be beneficial to my company very logical isn't it this is what is known as business case when i say beneficial benefits can be direct monetary benefits or indirect benefits direct monetary benefits means straight away i will see savings i will achieve some savings because i am doing lot of things in a wrong manner so i am losing money that is known as cost of poor quality that is known as cost of poor quality like in the yesterday's example garment industry like uh, the garments were produced with the defective buttons and uh, since the garment is an export quality rework is not allowed as part of the contract rework is not allowed as part of the contract in such a case if something goes wrong what the organization should do they must outrightly reject the garment am i right yes sir according to the contract you know they they are not yes. uh, allowing you to rework rework items we are not going to buy it's an export garment we are ready to pay the premium price right normally yes. you supply at 800 rupees only but they are ready to buy at 1000 1200 rupees and then they will be selling at you know 7000 8000 rupees it's an export garment so rework is strictly not allowed so imagine if 5% of the garments go through some this kind of defects all of them will be outrightly rejected right out of 100 garments 5 is getting rejected in a day they might produce about 1000 garments 1000 shirts so 5% of 1000 will be 50 shirts yes or no yes sir so every shift 50 shirts suppose if i assume a uh, cost of uh, one shirt being an export uh, shirt uh, 1000 rupees then every single shift the company is losing how much 50000 rupees one shirt we are losing 1000 rupees so 50 shirt 50000 rupees and in a day how many shifts are possible 
Today shifts are possible. Shift possible. So every day, the company is losing 1.5 lakhs. They are literally burning 1.5 lakhs. Can you see that, all of you? And so in a month, they'll be working for no 20, 25 days. Let's see, let us take just 20 days. 1.5 lakh into 20 days. It is account, it is amounting to 30 lakhs. 30 lakhs monthly, the company is losing, provided we don't attend to it. If we attend to it, we can immediately save on that. But if we ignore, we are going to lose 30 lakhs a month. So annually, this is going to be 3.6 crores. Can you see the impact a failure is making on your uh, finance part? 3.6 crores, a small mistake, you know, is costing the company 3.6 crores. If you if you write a line using the word 3.6 crores, annual loss, never ever indicate monthly loss or daily loss. You must always indicate annual because we are working with a recurring problem. We're working on a recurring problem. It keeps on, it keeps coming again and again. So throughout the year, it will, it will remain if it is unattended. So 3.6 crore is the impact the failure is making which is a direct impact. This is what is known as what? Business case. All of you are with me? There are six components a project charter will have. First component is business case. Clear all of you? Please confirm. Will you yes. be able to calculate yes, like this? Just yes, an Excel sir. sheet can help you, isn't it? Yes, yes sir. If you are intelligent enough, you can even, you know, you can even add some other cost also. That is also possible. Because a failure doesn't ju doesn't just you know end with uh, just the rejection. You have to actually you know uh, remove all those shirts to some other place. For that also you have to pay the price. And your production will get delayed. That also will pay the price. So there are so many ways of yeah time also wasted, and uh, so there are so many ways you know the cost can be accounted. You must you know sit down and uh, account everything and give the clear projection to the sponsor. And then any sponsor will definitely you know, pay attention. So this much potential is there. For this project can save me 3.6 crores. Why not I spend or read it for uh, another 30 minutes? He, he derives motivation from the business case. What is it? Business case. After writing the... See, but at the same time, you should not write it for two pages. Two lines. Punchline, right? Like a movie uh, message coming from a movie, like one line message. Likewise, you know, the business case. Sir, uh, this project uh, is cost, you know, the project has a potential to make a saving of 3.6 crores annually, which is a direct saving. That's all. This is good enough. Then you can, then you can proceed to the problem statement. While writing the problem statement, you should be able to communicate the pain, communicate the pain experienced by the people concerned. It may be your employee is suffering with something because of the failure or it may be your customer himself suffering or it can be the pain area of the management. Yes or no? Like if the shirts are continuously getting rejected, you know what are all the pains and the customer doesn't get the items on time. So they also, they are also you know, having a problem. They are repeatedly warning us. They have already sent three warnings. Again, next month, we are not going to affect the on-time delivery. They will even go to the extent of cancelling our contract. And our employees are getting frustrated. They are never able to produce the you know, production on time. Every day, they have to you know, stay one hour, two hour extra to meet the production goal. At the same time, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a stressful develop, yes or no? Yes. And the workplace will also know, near look ugly because all the rejected items are lying here and there, which is not part of the plan. Our plan is to produce you know, good products, but what happens in the process, every single ever bad products, bad products are also getting produced. So you need to explain all of these things in a, again, a crisp manner. First of all, how long the problem is happening? Last six months, we are experiencing rejection in the search section. Now, this line is helping the sponsor to understand how long the problem is existing. Last six months. Imagine the pain. If somebody is you know, experiencing a problem for last six months and you understand you know, the duration of it. And then where exactly? Problem is in the shirt section. Right? 
And then what exactly is the problem? Exact problem is button misalignment. And then what is the current state of the problem? What percentage of the shirts are getting rejected right now? 5%, 8%, 7%. You can include, yes or no? That number is CTB. When I say 5% of the shirts are getting rejected, it is CTB. I'm, I am calling it as critical to business. Yes or no? Because yes. rejection rate is a metric that is painful to the business itself. Anyway, that is, that is, you know, uh, that is also related to customer. Because if I maintain so much rejection rate, some point of time, you know, yeah, your poor quality product can also escape from the eyes of your inspector and then reach the customer also. So CTB, if not attended, it can become a CTQ problem in CTQ later on. All of you can see the connection. So you have to write like this. CTQ metric is required. Where is the problem happening? How long is the problem happening? And who is currently getting affected? Who is currently getting affected? The shirt section, right? And then, and then, uh, and then, if possible, you can also write a line about the consequence of not addressing the problem at, at uh, no, in the current time. If we don't, if we don't address this problem currently, you know what will happen? Tell me. If rejections we don't control, what will happen? The the customer might cancel the contract. Isn't, isn't it? That is what you know, we foresee. And over and above, we are get we are attracting you know negative comments during all the audits. Any audit that is happening, they are coming and saying, Hey, you have so many rejections happening. What is the action taken? And we are simply bluffing. We are not able to give a convincing reply. So all of them are you now giving a poor score to the particular department which is producing defects. Yes or no? And in order to keep the defects, then you have to have a separate uh, defect area. And defect area is not an attraction, isn't it? What is this here? defect area? If somebody comes, you know, they will laugh at you. They have an exclusive place for defect also. That means, you know, they all want to produce defects. So all these, you know, are the problem statement. Can you understand? Will you be able to write like this? Little English. Nowadays, no problem. Chat GPT and everything is, you know, is there to uh, help you. Uh, write the, what do you call, sentences in a convincing manner. You can bring some emotions. That is what I'm trying to say. While writing, you need to bring some emotion in your statement. Emotion helps, isn't it? Your sponsor will feel connected with your project. Oh, this much problem is happening in my factory. This much money we are losing. We suffered to pay salary a few months ago. But so many crores, you know, we are burning on the other side. Why not we recover this? So we can also pay the salary. We can also give good incentives and increments. Yes or no? So try to connect the emotions in your statement. Use the appropriate choice of the words so that the sponsor, though he is a busy man, he will start paying attention. Do you understand all of you? He'll start paying attention. So business case, problem statement. And then goal statement. Current rejection is 5%. Now, what can we achieve? We can definitely bring the rejection from 5% to less than 1%. Why am I saying this less than 1%? That is the industry practice. You go to any industry, any garment industry nearby, they're all maintaining. Even within our factory, the other sections are achieving less than 1%. So this is quite logical, isn't it, to target 1%. If you want to achieve it step by step, that's different. Sir, first let me bring it to below 3 and then I'll bring it below 1. But the benchmark is how much? Below 1%. 1. Mm. So, we have done some study. It is clearly evident that we have done some study. If somebody asks why you are going for 1%, we have some answer. Sir, you see, so many, so many studies have confirmed that garment industries in India are you know, operating like this. They are able to maintain a defect rate of less than 1%. So, definitely it is possible for us also. And within our factory also, the other departments, other garments, yes, this is the rate. So we should also achieve that. This is how you must write a goal statement. Goal statement should always be smart. Smart means it has five, word, five letters, S-M-A-R-T. S stands for specific. S stands for specific. M stands for measurable. 
you measurability is very very important right that metric the ctp metric that's why we use the tool ctp ctp is already measurable isn't it today morning while reviewing also we mentioned that ctp means it is specific it is measurable then only it is ctp so specific measurable it should be achievable a means achievable r means relevant t means time bounded all of you are with me on this smart remember the word smart it should be specific measurable achievable relevant time bounded how can you show relevance try to understand the kpis important for your sponsor pick up one important kpi out of it and try to include it in your problem problem statement or business case statement do you understand what i am telling your your sponsor is answerable for customer retention rate he will be reporting to the md of the company or he will be reporting to the chairman of the company and the chairman is very keen very frequently asking what what is the retention rate of the customer our company has 312 clients are you retaining all of them do you understand my question the retention rate can also be calculated right so like right now uh, like right now you know there are 30 of you attending the program when we start the next program let's say uh, green belt program or black belt program uh how many of you are coming back again or how many of you are coming back for our mbb program this is what is known as customer retention rate sir yes no so if the customer retention rate is very important to your uh, boss or the sponsor you must also use the same word in your pro proposal make sense this is known as relevance yes, because if i don't reject don't reduce the rejection my customer is ready to cancel the contract if the customer cancels the contract what will happen to the retention rate increase or decrease decrease it will decrease so which is a pain another pain for my sponsor so i am i am showing him the relevance of my project with his goal so he'll be i'm trying to convince him completely and then time bounded t means time bounded this project will get over in just a span of 4 months 4 months of effort can lead to a saving of 3.6 crores it will also help you achieve your kpi and customer will also happily continuing the business and all our employees will be motivated for that because there are no rejections has come down isn't it i don't know you have done something through out of your project you have simplified their work or you have provided them you know some new machine something you have done for them so your employees are also now feeling happy because otherwise without the success of the project it was a very uh, painful uh, you know day for your employees every single day but now what happened suddenly all the pain has vanished can you see that so you have to indicate time bounded tell me all of you will you be able to write like this while writing the business case problem statement and importantly goal statement yes or no yes yeah yes. but we don't expect yes, a story from uh, the project leader we expect a very crisp right clear concise statement without creating any confusion everything is you know a punch uh, line immediately it quickly conveys use appropriate choice of the words and then another uh, element in the project charter is scope statement scope scope means you are you want to do a project which department which product which type of defect which department which product which type of defect you want to address and what exactly is the process you are going to study and improve you should if needed you should also be able to draw the flow chart of the process which department which product which particular defect and which particular process you should you should clearly dictate i mean not clearly indicate say for example in our uh, garment case which department we are going to uh, implement the project shirt department buttons. ah shirt, 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 shirt section the particular section we are going to work is shirt section shirt that section. is in the scope in scope 
other sections are out scope. In scope is shirt section. Other sections are out scope, which means you are responsible only for the shirt section. All other sections, similar problem happens, you are not going to answer. Clear? And within the shirt section, there are, there are dozens of defects happening, but we are going to work on only the button misalignment defects. Do you understand? Defects because of button misalignment. Only those non-conformance reports we will be reading, we will be accounting. All other NCR we are not going to read. Do you understand all of you? Which particular department, which particular product, which particular defect, and what is the process now? Particular process. In a garment industry, what are all the process? Can you name the process in a garment industry? Tell me. What are the process in a garment industry? Raw material sourcing. After that, uh, okay, that means purchase. Raw material sourcing is purchase. After that, uh, raw material has come. Now somebody will be material. somebody will be cutting the garments, isn't it? Cutting is a process they follow, and stitching mm -hmm. is a process they follow. Somebody will be ironing all the ironing. garments. Somebody will be packing. Somebody will be billing. Now I want to know which process is triggering button misalignment. Stitching process. Stitching. Stitching process. So go to the stitching, stitching. section. They are stitching. So stitching itself, you now so many categories of stitching available. Stitching. Collar stitching, isn't it? Hand stitching and uh, some kind of neck stitching and so many things. And there is also a button stitching. There is also a button stitching process. Yes or no? Yes, sir. You must draw the flowchart of the button stitching process. Don't worry about the other stitching. Other stitching are going well, isn't it? Even if something happens, you don't have to worry. Your job is button stitching. How the button is getting added to the shirts? That is the question. Do you understand? Yes, sir. This is in the scope of your project. All other process that are happening in making of the shirt, you don't have to bother. Will you be able to write? Will If I ask you to draw a process flowchart of the button stitching, will you be able to draw the flowchart? Possible? Definitely, it should be possible. If you are, you know, or if you have worked in a garment industry, you know what are all the steps, whether they will use some machines or will they hand stitch it. There are certain things, right? If you are not having any clue, I still have a suggestion for you. Go to the spot where the buttons are getting stitched. You go and stand for 30 minutes. The 30 minutes is dedicated to understand the button stitching process. Can you not do this? If, if you are not clear about the process, go there and stand half an hour without you know, uh, doing other work. Just observe how the button is getting added. Try to find out the first step. Nothing but the starting point. Starting point of the button stitching. The starting point and ending point you must write down in your notebook diary. Starting point and ending point you must write down in your diary. Everything that is happening between the starting point and ending point is in the scope of your project. Am I right? Anything that uh, goes wrong uh, before start of the process or after end of the process, again, that is out of scope for your project. All of you agree with me on this? Yeah. So this is known as boundary. Yes, now, between the starting point and ending point, how many people are involved? There will be a stitcher. There will be a QC inspector. Yes or no? There will be a stitcher. There is a QC inspector. There is a line manager. He comes every 15 minutes once. Some machine, no? Some machine, uh, machine is involved and somebody is maintaining the machine. He is every daily basis. He is coming and checking whether the settings are okay or not. All these people are known as stakeholders. All these people are known as stakeholders. You know why are we why are we recording their names? Their inputs, you know, can be extremely helpful. Yes or no? Yes. Without their inputs, you, you are not a detective agency to detect everything on your own, right? Their inputs are required and uh, their, with the help of their inputs, you can quickly identify the root cause. All the tools, you know, can uh, start paying the results. 
So this is known as stakeholder analysis. If you do all of these things, now in order to, in order to tackle the problem, in order to deal with these kind of people, who should be the right composition of you know, for my project team? You understand? To deal with these people and solve this kind of problem in this process, what could be the right composition of project team I should have? Definitely there will be a project leader. Definitely there will be project you know, uh, team members. There will be few, few stakeholders should be part of your project team. And uh, very complex cases, you need some experts also. But this is not a complex case in my opinion, isn't it? Very, very simple case. So, and then uh, you need to indicate the sponsor. Now your project charter is ready. Yes or no? Because once you understand clearly, now putting it in writing is not a big task. Simply open an Excel and then, you know, create headings, add the logos, etc. And uh, the bottom, you can create signature provision where project leader has to sign some finance person has to sign and then sponsor has to approve and then he has to put the seal and then project number company name all those things on the top but in in the in the center of it i want the six details what are the six details first one business case mm -hmm. second one problem, problem statement third one goal statement fourth one scope statement fifth one team members project team members and sixth one timeline what, when is, when are you uh, likely to start your project? When are you likely to complete define? When are you likely to complete measure? When are you likely to complete analyze, improve, and finally control, and then celebration? Likely dates. We are teaching you so that, you know, you can judge the dates, you no know, to a certain extent correctly. Six Sigma projects may be, you know, sometimes challenging. No, the root cause sometimes, you know, you may, it may take more than the expected time. Those challenges will be there. But still, by keeping you properly, you exactly know what kind of activities need to be performed in Define, what kind of activities need to be performed in Measure. If you have that clarity, you can plan accordingly. All of you are with me? Right? Four months you divide. At the end of first month, what are you going to complete? What are you going to achieve? End of second month, what are you going to achieve? Third month, fourth month, and then project is over. Project is closed and you are celebrating the success. And who is responsible for all these milestones? This is known as project charter. Clear? Now I will show my slides. I need not explain anything now because I have already explained everything. Now you will only see how a project charter will look like. Just to know, get an idea. But uh, maybe some more additional details I will certainly give as we progress in the next level of classes, right? Yeah. So project charter elements, these are the six elements. This is what I explained to you right now. All right? Business case, problem statement, goal statement, and things like that. And how to write a business case, I have explained, but now I'm not going to re-explain. No, I explain it again. Some examples are also there. Please understand all the examples, all the live case studies, you know, are not the perfect examples. You must, you must accept, right? Because when we also do a project together, sometimes, you know, we may violate, you know, certain uh, guidelines given. But as long as, you know, we are getting results, that is okay. Am I right or not? So there can be a few, you know, deviations which you should not mind. Because these things, you know, we just copied from some of our project and then pasted here just to give you know illustrate as an example but what to write in the business case i have explained you you write it correctly right but most of them will be correct only i'm just telling you problem statement see here in the last 12 months do you understand the duration of the problem last 12 months there is a rejection rate of 2.8 percent what is this 2.8 percent what is this 2.8 percent the uh, CTB. CTB, exactly. Fantastic. CTB, critical to business, metric. This is the metric we want to improve. Actually, it is the rejection rate. Because of this problem, the company is losing 40 lakhs annually. And over and above, this is causing customer dissatisfaction. So, customer can you know, go away. And you are, you are attracting poor audit score in all the fibers audit. So, this is problem statement. 
and goal statement, it should be smart. I told you, S M A R T. And now tell me, is this statement smart? Achieve 3.8 sigma level from the current 3.4 by demolishing 65 percentage of the current rejection rate within 180 days. Do you see a timeline here? Do you do you do you see? 180 days. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. Are you able to see the specificness here? They are talking in terms of sigma level. And it, is it measurable? Yes, measurable. You measure DPMO or you know uh, CPCP and then convert that into sigma level. Specific, measurable, achievable. We, we are not going to know eliminate completely. Only 65 percentage of the rejection we are trying to eliminate through the project. This is achievable. And relevance, time bounded. Scope statement, in scope, out scope. Length undersized problem, cup bulb de-shaping problem. Two types of de defects are taken into account. Other defects, other rejections are not taken into account, out of scope. And then timeline, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. You can put tentatively and try to achieve it, right? So team members, the composition, sponsor, team leader, team member, stakeholders, subject matter experts, you can bring all of them. So this is an example case of a project charter developed by one of our uh, master black belt. He did this project to reduce the welding defects in uh, Oman. So the savings are expressed in Oman reals and maybe the material has been shared with you. You can read and then try to understand. If provided, you are an expert in welding. If you could understand the welding related terminology, you can read this. And this is about an auto component manufacturing company. See here, reducing the rejection. And what is this? Yeah, this is an engine manufacturing company, an engine manufacturing company. So for them, they have written. And they are calling problem statement as opportunity statement. And this one is a component manufacturing company, Piston, right? They are, they are trying to fix the chip off defect, outer diameter. Diameter is not coming, you know, as per the requirement. So you can also create the project team structure by developing this kind of, you know, uh, hierarchy. Who is the sponsor? Who is the leader? Who is the who are the consultant involved? What are the team members? And the roles and responsibility of each and every team member. The timeline. Right? Timeline is indicated in the form of what is this graph called? Right. Chart. Yeah. So this is what is you know project charter. So any questions to me? Any questions on developing a project charter? Please feel free to ask if questions. What is 